All right, we kind of got a plan going here. You're late, so let's get up to speed. Chop, chop. We got the electricians here. They're trimming out all the outlets, light switches. And I told them they better do the bathrooms fast and first or don't do them at all. Because we're, we're doing T-I-L-E. -E. That's a four-letter word for today. I'm not going to say the word at all because I hate it. What word? T-I-L-E. T-I-L-E. Dash L. T -A. <laughs> T -A. What is T -A? It's French. You know, I was really ticked that we were doing T I L E today Yo. until I realized that putting a thousand pounds of it in the back of my truck makes it ride like a Baja truck, like Dude, stuck to the ground. Dude, guys. hey, have you yeah. seen my truck? Uh -uh. Dude, hey, we got some B roll right. for you okay. already. Okay. okay. <laughs> yes, we got two different types here. Uh, the brown, the beige is both the downstairs. And then there's some rectangular gray ones. That's the upstairs bath. I just want to thank Lisa for picking tiles that I could actually buy thank somewhere. You, Lisa. Yeah, wow, that made it so easy. What are y'all filming over there? Do you want porn? Remove outer flange. Cutting wheel wrench provided. Install the cutting wheel. Shut your dirty mouth right now. Man, I have never seen a compression nut on a bunghole before. Look at that. You do that? Look oh, at that. That is pretty nice. Amazing. Loosen that up, comes right out. That's pretty smart. There's all kinds of patterns you could do, even with a plain square tile. We're just gonna do a simple brick pattern, but the orientation of the brick pattern is pretty critical. I don't wanna walk in the, in the doorway and look down and see one straight line ahead of me mm -hmm. because it's like nine feet long and I don't wanna see one straight line. So you gotta orient the pattern so that you see the stagger from when you walk in. The way you're gonna look at it the most. Yes, and especially since it's the long direction of the room. So here's what that means. There's going to be a whole tile, square, whole tile, square, half, right there. That's yeah. what we're going to do, okay? I think, I think that's So that there it. are no lines that line up in this direction. See what I'm saying? I got you. That's Loud what I clear. want. That's all it is. You want to explain it again, though? No, we can start from the top. All right, so the tiles are square. <laughs> okay. One other consideration for the layout of our tile in here. We want to end up with a full piece at our threshold. And we can't start at the threshold though, because then we can't get into the bathroom to lay it all the way back into here. So what we're gonna do is start there with one kind of row against the wall, work it all the way back to the back wall, and then sort of fill in the rest back to the doorway to the threshold. So when we're done, we'll be out of the room, right? Yes. And not all the way in the back <laughs> in the hole with all the tiles yeah. laid in now, front of us? Now, you could kind of work your way back into a hole and then stop and let all your tile, you know, let the mortar set and then yeah. come back the next day and finish. But I don't want to do that. I want to be done today. Me too. All three of them. Yeah, I think we can do it. That's dedication right there. Yeah. Hey, how's this TL working over here? Is it going good? Ah, uh, that's not rolling. You can move it. I don't have to turn it on. Oh. There's many different ways you could apply the thin set to the back of board and to the tile, but I'll tell you what I'm doing, or what I like to do anyway, is we're applying a thin coat to the back of board with this straight edge trowel, and I'm just literally skimming it on like this. It's probably an eighth of an inch. And then we're taking a quarter inch by quarter inch notch trowel, and I'm applying the mud to the back of the tile. And I'm spinning it around kind of like a pizza as I'm applying it over the mud bucket. And the trick that I think gets it on there the easiest, okay, is to pull the mud to the corner of the tile from the center as you're doing it, instead of like trying to start on one edge and push it all the way over, because then you get a bunch of stuff that goes around the corner, makes a big mess. And this sounds kind of like not a pro tip. <laughs> as I'm saying it, but I think it is. So I just apply mud to the center like that, and then I just grab a hold of it, and uh, about that much, and I pull it to the corner like that, and it just seems to work really easy and not make a big mess. And uh, 
I'll do a few like that to the edge. And uh, pretty quickly you can get a nice looking trout out piece. Stick it. Are you doing a half? Not like that, Ray. That's not how we told it's you. It's a half it. towel. What do you want me to do? <laughs> no matter how you do it, it's going to be wrong. No What's up? This is too cool, Ray. This episode is brought to you by Noom, and today you get to look into the future and see that we have windows. The future is looking good. I've been using Noom Weight, and what I've learned from it so far is that being healthy isn't about how long you can sustain something that you hate. It's about learning new habits that have a positive impact on your life. The psychology of why people overeat or eat certain things is really interesting. Since I've been on Noom, I've learned all this stuff, and they've got me in tune with the psychology of why I overeat, the reasons why, by asking me a series of questions, and I answered the questions and figured it out myself, but it was only by their prompting that I would have ever figured this out. And since Noom isn't just a diet, it's actually a way of thinking, it's been really successful at helping people lose weight and then keep it off permanently. In fact, my wife was telling me that Noom was the only thing that worked for quite a few of her coworkers over the last year. This is tough on a job site. Yeah. It's loud. There we go. Noom offers a short but impactful daily lesson that I've been reading to help me reach my goals. And as well as gaining knowledge, Noom also has a robust tool to help track food and exercise to help me meet and exceed my goal with no problems. So if you've been unsuccessful at losing a few pounds or even a few dozen pounds and keeping the weight off, I'd really encourage you to go to noom.com slash Perkins and take the free Noom evaluation. That's N-O-O-M dot com slash Perkins. Thanks to Noom for sponsoring this video and for helping me out. Let's get back to work. I noticed you were talking about your truck being kind of squishy with a thousand pounds in the back. Oh yeah. Mine has a thousand pounds in the back permanent. Wow. Like it never- All your junk. It's always there. So anyway, um, I decided I would get some helper springs. You ever yeah. heard of that? I have, like okay. extra leaf. Yeah, yeah, I was looking at them. I was looking for helper springs and then I found these rubber bumper kind. I'd never seen them before. It's like a giant rubber spring. Okay. All right. So, and that uh, replaces like the old yeah. bottom out. That's the factory piece? bottom out bumper. All right. Replace that with a spring thing. How's she ride? It rides like a million bucks. Really? I mean, well, at least a thousand bucks. <laughs> but anyway, if you're in construction and you always got heavy stuff in your truck, you might want to consider something like this because I didn't even know they existed till last week and it's only like a couple hundred bucks. So I went ahead yeah. and bought them. Or buy F, like an F350. But I'll say the F350 rides terrible on like really chattery gravel, whereas this is going to ride smooth. Yeah. And now you can put heavy stuff in it. Really? Ramble, ramble, ramble. <laughs> Sorry, I had to get something for you, bro. My, what big teeth you have there. <laughs> Easier to mud with. As you can see from our friend Jason over here dumping out the whole trowel bin, we have lots of different trowels all the way up to like a half by half notch for really big and uneven tight tile or stone. And I just want to mention that quarter by quarter is probably the absolute minimum with a one foot by one foot tile with the skimming we're doing underneath. If we weren't doing that, I would go quarter by three eighths. And the reason I'm comfortable with this is because I know that our floor is pretty darn flat because we built it ourselves and we checked everything. We planed down any humps in the subfloor before we put the back of board down. Then we mudded it down and we screwed it down. So we're pretty flat. So we don't need to work out a lot of inconsistencies there. Second thing, is that I'm not using tile spacers at all here. And the reason is we measured a couple of these tiles before we started and we'll see if this one is, this one's 11 and 7 eighths and I haven't checked this beforehand. Okay, that one's pretty much the same in both directions, but a couple of them that we measured were like an eighth inch different, okay? Between this dimension and that dimension, which means if I just use tile spacers, somewhere it was gonna get really wacky. So I'm just eyeballing all the joints, all the gaps, and we're going to see if that works out. But it usually does if your tiles are not all the same size exactly.
What is, Nothing. The, paint, what is what? the paint roller doing in there? I don't know. I think this is to put the mud down. Also, because these are not exactly the same size, I'm leaving a little wider joint than I normally would. It's about 3 16, so I'd normally go an 8, but I'm scared to do that. It's like a rock concert in here today. There's four electricians with two separate Bluetooth speakers playing different songs at once. It's time to do the tile layout in this room and I already decided where to place the tile so I need some chalk lines to get my first rows straight. Now I'm not convinced that this backer board is installed perfectly square to the room and so I'm not going to measure off the backer board lines. Instead I'm going to go off my OSB line here on my subfloor because I know it's the straightest thing I have as a reference. So I measured an offset and I'm going to have him pull it all the way from down there and extend it into this room. And I'm just going to chalk this little section of the room using a very long reference line. That'll get it as square to the entire house as it could ever be. So we've been using our tile saw that kind of looks like a water park or something for a while here. What do you think? I love it. Actually, this thing is heavy duty. This like table sides really nice on rollers and you can just shove a towel through there and this thing doesn't <laughs> slide it doesn't slow down at all it just cuts it so, so I'm, I'm actually quite impressed sweet and very happy you do need a lot of space though this is probably uh, five feet by four feet or something yeah this thing takes up some acreage you gotta have a little bit of room here um, but I guess the idea is that any water would actually flow back into the pan instead of all over. So if you're inside, if you happen to cut inside, maybe on a, on a wood like uh, subfloor, yeah. it wouldn't just be running on the floor. Yeah, and I've never seen anything like this. No, this is... This it's is... even got the major backstop there, the final boom. stopper. You can see, yeah, the water's just boom, hitting right there. It's working great. Hmm. We're gonna lay out this upstairs bathroom and we're just gonna show you what we're doing in case it helps you out. We're doing this six by 12 tile here. And instead of coming out with a full tile, like starting at the threshold and working our way in like we did, and then working back, I'm gonna do a little math to start from the back and just work towards the exit. Cause that's gonna be a lot easier. And what I've done is I've figured it where I have a little bit of play. So I'm gonna figure on like a five plus inch piece being in the threshold. I don't want to end up with a full piece because then if we run a little short, we have no way to make it longer. And I don't want a little strip. So we're just going to play it safe and the threshold will have a slight rip on one of these full tiles. Yo, I think Eric's trying to break this thing the first day, bro. Yeah, I know. He's like, What's, it's like speed cutting, like how fast you can cut a tile. He's like, go! Things like... Oh, hey, what's up? <laughs> I think so, dude. He's like, I'm gonna show this thing who's tough. I'm really liking the way this tile looks on the floor, but it's taking us forever, isn't it? Yeah. Um, especially when we got around this toilet flange, we broke a piece. Jason broke a piece. He's about to lose. I broke a piece. Uh, broke a piece. About five or six I'm cuts because it was like a little sliver of like that was all that was left. And honestly, we just gave up because it's going to be under the toilet. It's merely us being like stubborn and feeling like the tile needs to be perfect even when it's under a toilet that we tried it five times. So we're just here to make you feel better if you're cutting tile and it just keeps snapping over and over. Sometimes, is this porcelain or is this... Uh, it is porcelain. Okay. Porcelain will tend to snap like that easier uh, than ceramic. So, hey, it's John, gonna get covered John up. Jason's about to lose his mind. Jason's about John to, oh, Jono's about to lose his mind. <laughs> Jason is close, but we're just gonna move on. It's gonna get covered by the toilet and we're gonna get out here where there's no cuts and keep trucking. Here's a for instance here. Uh, Jason just brought me this piece. It's a good fit around here, around the pipe, but look, it shattered off right there and I bet he doesn't know it because he was probably cutting it from the back. So now we gotta go tell him. I'm not <laughs> telling him, you tell him. Uh, not it. 
<laughs> you can tell him. He's got to right, cut I'll that whole thing him. again. It's a good fit. If, if anything, just a little looser around there. I'm going to give him the good news first. It fits, yeah. but you broke it. Right. I'm doing something tricky here. I'm having to lay the tile from the back of the room all the way to the front. On the last little bit here, I'm kind of pinned in, and I have to land at an exact full tile at the threshold. That is not easy to do. What I'm doing to make it happen, though, is I actually place the tiles with the correct spacing between each one, exactly the way they're gonna get laid, but I didn't mud them down. They're just sitting here dry. And then, as I start in the back here, I can align it with the tile that's already laid on the floor that's not mudded, and then I pick them up one at a time and mud them as I exit. Now, to make sure I don't step on a tile that's been mudded, because I'm standing all over the tiles, is I put a piece of tape on the ones that I put down already, and I know that I can't step on that tile. You know, every time I think, you know, tile's gonna be okay, guess what? Never is. Still sucks, every yeah. time. <laughs> every time. Don't know what it is, just makes you really angry. It's just not, it's not easy to cut. That's, That's right, it. yeah, when compared to cutting wood, this is just terrible. Like, it just... And compared to installing wood with a couple nails, this is terrible. Yeah. It's messy. Sucks. Sorry to any viewers who are offended. <laughs> but, <laughs> there's no other word. All right. Come on down. Ow. Yes. <laughs> you know, I'm really old that this music sucks really bad. <laughs> I don't know which one it is. Jamie's had a little break. Little, very little. He's gonna take over and finish this. <sighs> Not because I want Cause to. Because I'm done with the T-I-L-E. Done. So mm -hmm. what I'm doing here is breaking it on thirds. I got a four inch starter, eight inch starter, 12 inch starter, repeat. Mm. Like that. And I'm just flushing those uh, with the face of the drywall. Can you go over the rules again? Don't call it T-I-L-E tile because it's a four letter word. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> tile, the newest four letter word <laughs> yeah seriously i think we know who the real boss is jamie got done with his room downstairs and eric's like hey come finish my room <laughs> jamie's like okay i'm gonna take a break <laughs> <laughs> your whole life's a break hey, you bro. can do me I'm a big <laughs> <laughs> yeah right get your ass over there ray i need your help no, 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 you don't. No. Go. no, get over there and mud some stuff. We're gonna do a, a little. We're gonna do here. some digital assets. Yeah. <laughs> I got some digital assets. <laughs> I think he's trying to get he's out. He's smart. This is about what. It's about my limit right here. I know. You, you guys need some help. <laughs> Jay, you need any help? Oh, no answer, I yeah, guess no they're good. Answer. Jamie, you need some help. <laughs> Tomorrow? Yeah, do I need to bring anything? Uh, I'm gonna get a down rod, I'm gonna get grout. Tile break, tile snapper? Yep. Oh, nail guns, yeah, yeah. Nail guns, finish guns. Oh, for the evolved 16 stone. gauge, yep. Uh, oh, hey, if y'all have any uh, 16 gauge nail guns, bring them. Dom wants to do a test. Oh, we got a brand new one. Okay, bring it. <laughs> I do need to measure all the interior trim. Door and window casings, baseboards. I think boards. you said that this morning. I've been saying that for every day for a week. Probably still, should I do st it. Still need to do it. Yeah. I did order the doors though. Good. They're on order. So we we're clicking along here. Yes. We got all three of those bathrooms tiled one day. Oh, yeah. Hey, and good news. Did you hear what's coming up? Uh, the uh, new season of The Bachelorette starting. What? <laughs> okay. It's only a few weeks away now. Cut. All right. <laughs>